You know, when it rains on race day, you know, I look out the window and I see it's wet out. You know, I'm thinking there's, there's nothing but opportunity in this. To be honest, I, I actually do love rain condition because it's so much unpredictability that it gives a lot of opportunity. I think the first thing you do is, is you look at how wet it's going to be because um, that determines, you know, how much you'd actually change the setup. And, um, you know, I'd be surprised to hear that there's not a whole lot that you actually do. Um, obviously, you change the tires and, and you compensate to make sure that the car doesn't struggle to go through puddles so you don't have hydroplaning. Well, changing the car is an interesting thing. Some guys do a lot, some guys do nothing. It depends on what you think, the ra how the race is going to develop. But typically, you'd soften it up. Um, you would move uh, brake bias uh, towards, towards the rear of the car. You'd add as much downforce as you can if it's a car with wings and stuff like that. You know, usually you want to make it more forgiving, which is a softer setup, where the car moves more, has more roll, not so stiff. You can change a lot or change a little. Sometimes in the Indy car, if we're going to a race, it's going to rain. We think it might dry out. We might not change the setup at all other than throw a little extra downforce. And uh, to start in the rain, move the, move the brake bias backwards um, so you're not locking up fronts. Because once a front locks in the rain, you're going straight in. Uh, and the most important thing is, is you don't want to be committed to a fully wet setup if it starts to dry out. Because a dry setup in the wet is always going to be faster than a wet setup in the dry. But the biggest adjustment you make in the rain is your driving style and the way that you drive it and your line. And I think that's what a lot of people uh, don't really pay enough attention to. Yeah, mentally you have to slow yourself down, absolutely. Um, it's a situation where you get into the race and you have to take steps at it. You know, you can't go full qualifying mode right away on the first lap. You have to you know, you're kind of tiptoeing around trying to find where the grip is. You're always experimenting in the rain because every lap the track is changing. You can't be as aggressive in the rain, uh, for sure, because your margin for error is much, much slimmer. Uh, typically, you want to make sure you're driving offline at all times, braking offline. So if you're entering a right-hand corner, normally you brake as far to the left as you can. In this case, brake on kind of the right, the middle or the right side of the track where there's no rubber laid down. Uh, what you're going to do is on the entry of the corner, you're going to cross over the, the normal racing line, run on the outside of the corner, and cross over again and try to accelerate offline. That's why sometimes you see the people braking like inside of the track, almost like overtaking, which means like avoiding rubber. And then shooting off to the Mr. Apex and going along the, on, the, on the outside of the track, which is more actually grip than the, uh, the racing lines. Moving offline is about avoiding rubber. Uh, rubber on rubber, when it's wet, it's, it doesn't work. Uh, you want to find that, that coarse surface, whether it be asphalt, concrete, whatever it is, you want rubber on that surface. That's what you're trying to find. You're trying to corner there, put the power down there, the whole thing. In tires is obviously oils, and in oil, with water, we know how that mixes. And so when you, when you want to get offline, you want to get away from those oils, and you want to stay away from paint. That's the other thing people don't know. If you pour water on top of paint, it doesn't get absorbed into the paint. So you have more water there than you will on another part of the track where the surface is more porous and there's, the holes are bigger because they're not covered with rubber. So the water will absorb more into the grounds and so you won't, you won't have as much water on top of the racetrack. Visibility is always tough. So remember your, your braking markers, remember uh, different landmarks you know, as you're going down a straightaway. Yeah, visibility is terrible in open wheel cars in the rain. Been in some races where I'm in six gear going down the straight. I remember one at Road America. Six gear doing whatever it is, 180 miles an hour. I couldn't see two feet in front of me. I actually, when I drive in the rain, I carry a microfiber cloth with me. I put it between my legs. I can hold it for the entire race. And I can wipe off my visor because the dirt will start to build on my visor. So if we're under yellow, I might give it a, a, a quick wipe. But if you're kind of two or three cars behind, you don't see a whole lot. So you're, you're constantly looking to the left or to the right. Looking in front of you is pretty much useless. When the visibility is very bad, you have to start right away by checking in your peripheral. Markers on the side, you know, if you're going by a tree or a light pole on a street course, these things, that'll cue you into the fact that you're getting close to the brake zone. And instead of looking in front, actually we need to watch the side, see how much the, uh, the, the white line is, where we are, and in terms of the passing on pit lane, okay, now it's, you know, cross to the town one, okay, now it's hit the brake. You have to trust the guy in front, yes. it's a, it's a pretty difficult. Remember that the one key thing about racing in the rain, in any race, is the man who stays on the island the longest is the one who's going to win, right? So make no mistakes, stay on the track, and you'll have a good day.